Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Not gonna lie to you guys, being a guitar player in 2021 is awesome. So this is the new Sterling by Music Man Cutlass CT50, and it's got a roasted maple neck and fingerboard. What that means is that through heat and chemical treatment, they've taken out all the moisture of the wood, made it more resilient. It moves less with atmospheric changes and things like temperature, humidity. That extra stability is awesome whether you're on the road or in the studio. And it used to be a very pricey feature only found on super high-end guitars or custom shop builds. This guitar, it's 500 bucks. So that's awesome. How's the rest of the instrument though? Let's take a closer look. Massive thanks, first of all, to Sterling for sending this guitar over for us to check out together. That was really, really cool of him. Really appreciate it. All right, time to see if it chugs. <laughs> It chugs. Action's a little high though, so hang on one second. Love that on these guitars. You don't have to remove the truss rod cover, adjust it, put it back. Maybe the neck moves a little bit more, have to remove it again. Just got an email, they're probably just as impressed. You have to say this neck is really good. It's really interesting too. It's not like a normal modern C like how you get on a Squire or a Fender. It's like an asymmetric shape. So the treble side is thinner, the bass side is thicker. It's almost got like a thick vintage U shape on the top and then more of your typical modern C on the treble side. And it's really nicely oiled so it feels played in. It feels really smooth. Oh yeah, and if you haven't noticed, yes, this is a roasted maple neck and fingerboard on a $500 guitar, and it's also got locking tuners. <laughs> I love being a guitar player in 2021. Yeah, I mean, this sculpted joint, even though it's a bolt-on, this is actually really comfortable. Usually bolt-ons are kind of weird because it's like two separate shapes that are combined. They don't really match up to the shape of your hand. This one's really nice though. No complaints. You know what I do have complaints about though? Bulky traditional wallets. They suck. <laughs> Let's take a quick second to thank the Rich Wallet for sponsoring today's video and I will use that money to get another dog. Oh wait, that's probably a really bad idea. But anyways, Ridge is redefining the wallet, which is awesome because traditional wallets are kind of the worst. They're big, they're bulky, they somehow manage to collect all this useless crap that you will never need. Old hotel key cards, loyalty rewards from restaurants you visited exactly one time three years ago. Switching to the Ridge wallet has been like a spring cleaning for my pants. Wait, I mean, look how small this is. Wait, it's been strangely freeing carrying around only what I need. Then the plates are made of highly durable materials, your choice of aluminum, titanium, or carbon fiber. I've tried all of them, they all feel great, and there are plenty of color options to choose from whatever fits your style. The whole thing is also RFID blocking to thwart scanners from stealing your card information because like, yeah, getting your information stolen is not fun. So if you wanna see why so many people are switching over to the Ridge wallet, head on over to ridge.com slash agafish. And if you use the code agafish, they'll give you 10% off your order and it helps out the channel. And while you're doing that, let's talk more about this guitar though. Let's try some cleaner tones maybe. That's pretty nice. I'm not really a clean player, so when I go to the clean channel, it's like, ooh, I like it though. It's very, uh... It's very nice. Yeah, I mean, I talked to Andrew Bain about his as well, and he agrees the neck is the star of this whole show. I mean, also the metallic color. Like, you seen this guitar, roasted maple with the metallic silver? This is f***ing gorgeous. I mean, also the fretwork is real impressive. The frets 
feel great. Fairly certain these are medium jumbo, I'll have to check, but it's fairly modern feeling. Like, okay, Sterling has slapped a $500 price tag on this thing. But honestly, this is one of the best modern takes on a Strat that I've played. Budget guitar or not, like I love how it's got all the modern stuff up here and then the vintage sensibilities and the electronics. And this neck, man, I mean, this neck is so, so good. Uh, I mean, Sterling had killed it with this, man. Such a sick guitar. For now though, let's jump into a demo track and then I'll meet you back here for some final thoughts. Okay, just a few final thoughts. First off, I mean, the guitar looks incredible. But more than that, this guitar is a huge statement and a new wave of game changers in the affordable market. I mean, you've got Harley Benton that has been doing the roasted maple thing on affordable guitars for a while, but they're only shipped from Germany since they're Toman's house brand. Coming at this from a US perspective, I mean, Sterling's are sold at Guitar Center or Long and McQuaid if you're in Moose Country. <laughs> the point is, Sterling has great distribution. They're available locally in a lot more places. Global health disaster I'm not allowed to talk about on YouTube without getting demonetized permitting. You'll be able to walk into your local store, pick one up, try one out for yourself. And that's huge for a lot of guitar players. So the fact that you've got Sterling by Music Man, part of the Ernie Ball Corporation, helping push roasted maple into the mainstream, 
of these affordable $500 guitars is massive. And it doesn't hurt at all that this guitar is a f***ing awesome player. The Cutlass is an improvement on the classic S-style guitar in so many ways. The asymmetric neck shape feels amazing, it mirrors the theme of the entire guitar, it's like a combination of vintage and modern, and it's so well oiled, which in my opinion feels better than gloss or even satin. The fretwork too, I was wrong, they're listed as medium. Totally thought they were medium jumbo, but who am I to argue with the official spec sheet? Either way, it feels modern, not those tall, narrow frets found on vintage spec instruments. These electronics, they're good, they're usable, they're pretty much what you expect on a $500 guitar. So you can pick this up, so you can pick this up as a mod platform or use as is, it's totally up to you. I thought especially the single coils sounded quite good, warm and chimey. The bridge and locking tuners are nice, they're nothing special, but they work well. Wouldn't really recommend going too crazy with the vintage trems since that tends to knock the guitar pretty out of tune, but light vibrato use, it's awesome perfectly fine. One of my favorite things though is the one volume, one tone layout. All right, straight up, I hate where the volume knob is on most strats. It makes sense for volume swells, but it is detrimental for the chugs, so that's not cool. The fit and finish on this one is really impressive too. Couldn't find anything that stuck out or ruined the experience in any way. Pringles licked this guitar a lot too, so I guess that counts for something. Yeah, this is my first time playing a Cutlass, and I guess I would describe it as the Strat Evolved. And this one, at a price that won't make your Ridge Wallet too sad? It's really cool. I love it. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are, of course, just my opinions. I would love to know what you think. Have you played a Cutlass before? Sterling or Music Man? What was your experience? What did you think? Let me know in the comments. Of course, here I gotta be the YouTuber and ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. All the things that help the channel and help grow the community. I appreciate you in advance. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you for the next video.